welcome to the Monday, October the 2nd, 2023 meeting of the Montpelier Design Review Committee. We'll let committee members and staff introduce themselves. Eric uh, Johnson, member. Martha Smirsky, member. Ms. Pritchett, member, alternate. Steve Everett, member. Meredith Crandall, staff. At this point, we'll let Meredith review the remote meeting procedures and process. Hey. I think most everybody on tonight has actually seen this before, but got to go ahead and do it um, for anybody watching via Orca Media. So uh, da, 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 here we go. Um, so the items on the screen are mostly for people watching via Orca Media, um, but then there's pointers I'm sharing verbally that will be for everybody. Um, so for anyone viewing tonight's design review committee meeting via Orca Media, you can participate in the discussion using the Zoom platform through either video or telephone access options. Um, if you want to use your computer or your smart phone, you can put um, this uh, into your browser, put this link into your browser, type it in, and I will get a notice that you want to get into the meeting and I'll let you in. Alternatively, you can dial in using this phone number and then put in this meeting ID um, when prompted. Um, and again, I'll get a little notice that you want to come into the meeting and let you in. Um, the advantage to using the browser is that you will be able to share screens with us and see everybody who's talking um, and we'll be able to see you. If you're trying to get in tonight, into tonight's meeting and you're having problems, please email me at mcrandall at Montpelier dash vt dot org. I will be monitoring my email throughout the meeting. Um, for those attending via Zoom, turning your video on is optional. And if you're having problems um, connecting, especially with the video, then we actually suggest that you turn your camera off um, and that'll help with the um, internet bandwidth. For everyone attending, please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. This will reduce background noise. If you're calling in over the phone, you can use star six to mute or unmute. Uh, please reserve the Zoom chat function for troubleshooting or logistic quest logistics questions only. If you have a question or comment um, about an item on the agenda, please raise your hand either physically or by using the raise hand button on your Zoom toolbar. Um, and then wait until the chair has recognized you to speak. Um, in the event the public is unable to access tonight's, me tonight's meeting, it will need to be continued to a time and place certain. I will now hand the meeting back over to the chair. If members have had a chance to look at the agenda, do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. This is Martha. I'll second it. All in favor of the agenda, speak your names. Liz. Martha. Eric. And Steve. Ben. Ben. And Ben. Welcome, Ben. Thank you. We can move to the first application for 8 State Street continued. Applicant is Lucky Boardman for replacement of windows in the residential units. You want to describe your application for us? Uh, yes, hi. I actually have Bill Morvan on with me from RK Miles, and he'd be more in depth to answer all your questions. So I'll just let him speak. But if there's a question I can answer, I'll be right here. Okay. Uh, good evening. This is Bill Morvan from RK Miles. Um, Lucky is proposing to install or replace um, a couple Marvin insert elevate units similar to the ones we did on Langdon Street. Uh, these have two over two simulated divided like grids, uh, white exterior, white interior. Um, I know one of the questions is half round, we're replacing as a half round. Our proposal is to do that as a straight top window currently. Um, basically, um, the same window that it's the exact same window that we're putting into um, Langdon Street. Were the original windows the arched glass? Uh, that does have an arch top, correct. Was there a reason not to duplicate it other than cost? Uh, no expense. 
I think I think Lucky's plan, as we discussed, would be to try to uh, um, keep the half round look with some carpentry work um, in the trim versus the window itself. Do we have an idea? Do we have an idea of what the uh, cost difference would be? Uh, it's about five times the difference. So if a window is a hundred bucks with a straight top, it's going to be five hundred dollars with a curved top. Uh, yes, that's approximately true. It's a custom. It's a custom custom window from Marvin. The window certainly can be made. Um, yep. It's just the added expense. And how many windows are we talking? Sorry, I don't have it. In that number in front of me. Uh, Lucky, you, you you probably know that better than I do. I think there's seven of them. It's the entire front um, is what we're going for. So I can look, but the, you just had the picture up there. I want to say it was 14 total. It looks like it's 14 from your pi picture here. Yeah, that's correct. I think we're doing it in phases, so two phases. The first one will be half of that and then the remainder. And lucky the the image I'm showing right here. This is different windows that have like the wooden insert. Is that on the same building or is that a different building? That seemed to have like an insert above the rectangular windows. That looks like it's possibly the back of the. Okay. What is the exterior color, Lucky? They're white. Okay. And the existing windows are white? Yeah. I think that's what we found, Lucky found when he did scrape them at one point. Okay. That's correct. The originals seem to be white. Mm -hmm. So you're keeping, keeping the arched <clears throat> wooden trim and the Square top upper sash would fit behind that. Is that the way it works? Uh, yeah, I mean, some of that will come down to carpenter, you know, Lucky's carpenter doing the install. But yes, that would be the hope is that that trim that you see or a replacement piece of trim, the window has to sit behind that because that trim acts as a, a stop. Right. Okay. Thank you. So, would that trim be blocking off part of the window? Uh, I do not believe so. Just just enough to hold the top of the frame of the window in. Yeah, the curt <clears throat> the curtain window sets up past that as, as it is now. That's how it works. Let me go to so here's a view of the existing, right? Is this the inside of the existing lucky? That's correct, yep. Yeah. So basically the wood trim applied to the outside will cover the corners, the square corners on either side of the upper sash. That's correct. I think the goal would be try to, you know, keep the look as, as close as possible, but you know, replace with an energy efficient window that's that's operable. Most of these windows currently are barely operable. They have broken balances and um, they're they're probably quite unsafe. So and I think that's the goal is to, you know, get as you know close as possible and, you know, be as energy efficient and also financially responsible. And obviously these windows are more than a hundred dollars. So five times the value is, is a massive difference. Did you, did you actually get a, a quote on the arch top window? I did. What was the price per window on the arch top? It's about a uh, $5,500 window. I don't have that with me, but I think that's what the my memory serves me as it being. As opposed to how much for the square sash? About $1,000. That's okay. Yeah. Trust me, as a commission-based salesperson, I'd love to sell, sell the round top. Um, I just want to think, you know, housing and it's, it's a lot of additional money. 
Chris, could you go back to that interior picture you had? Our interior storms it now, currently, right? Yeah, it has removable storms now. <clears throat> and the interior and what we're looking at is the window. I wonder if there isn't a way to uh, insert a piece of wood that's uh, machined to match the curb curve uh, into the window. Leave the square construction and, and just uh, put an arch piece inside. We can certainly investigate that upon install. Eric, are you saying in addition to outside? Yeah, I think I think I, I just think in a piece of applied wood that matches the curve mm -hmm. window would probably work. I don't know. Uh, I, I'm sure there are local carpenters that could make something like that. I mean, I guess the question is, Lucky, what did you have a a plan on how you might address it in the trim work and the carpentry to create that curve? Well, due to the cost difference and how to attach onto that glass, I mean, we didn't really have an idea because there we were hoping the curve was subtle enough that it wouldn't we can look at upon install. I mean, I don't I haven't seen the other window, so I don't know what it would entail. I mean, it could be simple, but I mean, what would I do? Glue to the glass? I don't know how it would look or how it would operate or change the operation. Sure, I guess my question was more in doing, uh, as I understood it from the beginning, the idea of having a square top window and then infilling above with a curve. I don't exactly know how that works, but I didn't know if you had a, did have any sort of sketch or a plan other than what Meredith's currently showing us as a as a way to manage it. Well, I mean, the original exterior sash is curved, so the wind the square top would just be going behind it. Um, the window itself does have a, a slight curve on it, but as Bill pointed out, the cost is substantially different. Um, but I mean, we can look at when, you know, if this is approved, we can happily look at what, what it would take to add some kind of look to it. Um, so Lucky, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna double check because I think there's different discussion points going on here. So this piece of, of trim that my cursor is going over right now, hold on, let me make it a hand if I can. Here, this is going to stay that's correct and the the quote unquote rectangular window is actually going to go up above it so you won't actually see the top of like the window like you like here it would be behind and above is that what you're saying you can still see some of it but it goes behind and above just like that one would yeah um and so this piece of curved trim is going to stay there and there isn't going to be like a straight line below that curved trim from the new window well there, that, that will probably have a straight line yeah there would bottle so, right right to that curve the top of the window is thicker than the built up of that molding so that when it top of the window hits at the low points in the corners, you will still see a straight line where that mullion is coming through. Is that what you're saying? No, that window sets up past that mullion. That's the actual stop for the top of the window. I think if you sandwich a piece of curved trim 
between the outer molding and the 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 window frame itself i think you would be able to get the outer the upper sash so close to that piece of trim that you would not see that gap i agree i agree with that that i think at the end that that's exactly that's it with that window all the way up and then with a little trim detail by the carpenter i think the look will be achieved is that Yep. Is the top of the window now curved to match the brick and the molding? The frame, the window frame. It's yeah. it's square behind it here, Eric. See? You can see the brick here. I see that. I see the to window. To curve the glass, but then the frame here of the window is square on the inside squared off okay that's that's what i understand so it's, it actually the window fits into a flat top of that the square and it's the window frame that brings the curve to the glass correct Lucky, I'm certainly sensitive to your cost concerns, and uh, and it is a, a beautiful detail on this building, and I take your commitment to trying to find some way during installation to allow that curve to stay accentuated, um, which I greatly appreciate. I wish there was a way to visually see how you might go about doing that. Well, until we actually get the windows, we won't know, um, you know what, what kind of detail we need to do. I mean, we would do something as simple as, because it's such a distance, uh, you know, stain it or paint it in. I mean, it all depends on, you know, what's in your hands. And obviously the cost difference is, is astronomical. So we're trying to figure out a, Alternative option for sure. I mean, we want the building to be as original as possible. Lucky, do you have a con a contractor on board for this? Yes. We have Who all is it? Staff. Excuse me? We we have in-house staff. Have they done anything like this before? I mean, yeah, we, we do a lot of trim, but not particular to, particularly to windows. I mean, cabinetry, carpentry is all relevant, I would feel. But, um, you know, like I said, until we actually touch the window, hold the window to install the window, it might be something very simple, um, but I won't know. For Are you intending to paint all that, that molding on the outside while you're also replacing those windows? I am, yes. By the way, when you paint the trim on the outside, I highly recommend using a urethane primer on it so you won't have to touch them again for another 10 years. Exactly, that's the paint plan. I guess that certainly by the idea that you're painting there does make me wonder whether there's like, once you pull the window out, whether there's like, if required, another layer of trim that went in to build, build in that opening, uh, whatever was required to maintain that curve and then not see uh, the straight of the window if, if that's what ended up happening. I realize that's a fair amount of additional labor, but um, I'm throwing it out there as a concept. The, the, these windows are the Marvin Integrities? Uh, it's, well, it's a Marvin Elevate today. The Integrity was, the, it's the, it's what was the old Integrity line. Yes. Is it the wood frame or the solid? Wood frame. Fiberglass. Wood frame. Wood, wood frame, fiberglass exterior. Okay. 
there is a space between the upper sash and the outside of the frame that you could insert the piece of arch trim so that it would be just a fraction of an inch away from the upper sash itself, which you would not be able to see a gap between the sash itself and the trim, it would be so close. Yeah, exactly. I mean, our, like I said, our intention is to make it as close as possible. And we have the staff and the uh, ability to do whatever we need, but until we order the windows and get them here, we won't, we won't know exactly what we need to do for that detail. And one thing I was not thinking is that in the upper sash, well, in both sashes, you have, you know, the vertical muntin dividing the sash into two panes. And so if you try to put a piece of wood up on the top, that muntin is going to be in the way and to some degree. It doesn't project out very much. But anyway, it might just look awkward. I don't know. I'm, I like the idea of maybe doing a template to see how it might look, but I have a feeling, I don't know, I'd be curious, but uh, I'm not sure it's really a, a good solution yet. The ones we've installed, the muttons, the dividers are flush with the outside of the sash. So again, if you were, besides that, the, the top of the arch would be at the top of the it would be the top of the what the arch is now would be at the bottom of that trim piece anyways and the windows the upper sash only is lowered so i don't think it would interfere with anything i, I think there'll be a couple couple different ways to potentially uh, mimic the the curve um, and i think part of that will be determined once we have a window on site and really able to dissect what's there. Um, and I would like to think at the end of the day, that exterior trim is gonna, is gonna, you know, what's gonna continue to keep that round for us. How about this as a concept? And I, again, feels maybe a little laborious, but if we were to approve the windows, the square top windows, and then you were to, pull one out and mock up a couple different ways that you might approach the curve and give us some photographs to say, uh, and your recommendation and your thought as to what feels right to you. And then we could go from there. Does that, I don't know how others feel about that, but I would be in support of that. Well, I mean, it, yeah, if we gave a couple options and then you pick from the options, but I don't want to spend X amount of money and then have, nobody happy with anything. I mean, like I said, at the end of the day, our ultimate goal is to make this as close as possible. And, uh, you know, it's our goal. We want it to be as easy. But, you know, if, if we get the windows in and then tenants have ripped apart apartments and we're waiting, it's very difficult to schedule. And we have a lift outside on the street. So we're, you know, right. kind of so if it's, if I have to wait three weeks for an approval, it's, it's also difficult. I would like to yeah. think the board would just, approve it based on the fact we are doing something positive for the building and our tenants and knowing that we wish to keep it as aesthetically close as possible. And I think we would all love it to go ideally like that also and be able to approve based on that goodwill and that that idea um and it's not a this is not a reflection on you in any way lucky it's just a making sure that we're setting a precedent and paying attention to uh these things and people's ideas of what how they think things are going to go is always different than the way it goes for the next person so we're just being somewhat careful about that but it's not about you no no of course what if we make a re recommendation that the arch is to follow the template based from one of the old windows 
and it's located as close as possible to the actual sash itself in the frame of the window. I mean, that sounds fine. That's our intent. Are members willing to live with that? Making that recommendation? I'm good. I would like to see what's going to happen, though. Yeah, I'm I'm struggling to to try to picture it too. I I like um, Ben's idea a lot, although I recognize that that is going to be difficult to bring about. Could you repeat that, um, Steve? I, I didn't catch all that you had said. I was just saying that we would recommend that the template a template be made from the original window to match the curve and that that piece be inserted in the frame of the Marvin window so that it's as close as possible to the upper sash so that you're not going to see any gap between the sash and that piece of trim. In other words, you could put it so it's about an eighth of an inch away from the sash and then you would not see, see that gap. It would not be noticeable. Okay. <laughs> Lucky, is there any, am I on mute? No, is there any chance that any of those apartments are vacant at the moment? No, not at the moment, but um, <clears throat> that's why it's going to be a, you know, a process. Obviously we'll schedule them and do what we can do. Um, yeah. I guess I was imagining in an ideal world, maybe there was one apartment that was vacant enough that even if you didn't have the exact window, you were able to maybe pull that window out and put in something that represented that window's dimensions to work out the trim details so that that was all done ahead of time. So you could easily just, as you were putting in the windows, implement the idea. Mm -hmm. no, unfortunately, especially with the flood and the housing way it is, nothing's ever empty. Nothing, right. Yeah, totally. I understand that. And it's paid for heat, so it's it's definitely something we want. Yeah, I think we would tolerate some foam in a window for a short period of time if that was what was happening. But uh, but I I get that there's no vacancies. Are the current windows flat on the top? There's no curve on the very top of the windows, and the curve is made up to the wood piece at the top. That appears to be the case, yes. It seems to me that what Steve suggested uh, makes a lot of sense. It should be, you should be able to put in an insert there that matches the curve of the existing window. And that that shouldn't be terribly difficult, a little labor intensive, but not impossible. And again, that could be inserted inside of the frame of the window itself. And again, in order to be as close as possible to the sash, you would want to install it within the framework itself. Yes, we'll, our goal is to make it as close to possible. As uh, maybe that's a good compromise to, you know, we realize the expense of having custom windows made and this is kind of a a, a media you know intermediary <laughs> or uh, approach my assumption is, is marvin really doesn't want to make the windows with the top curved top <laughs> i was actually out at marvin about a week ago um, and that round top curved top window is complete craftsman it's it's all handmade pretty impressive to actually watch but that's where the price comes from it's uh, pretty amazing to see the Marvin plant out in War Road, Minnesota. There's certainly a big difference between uh, seventeen thousand and ninety thousand dollars. 
Thank you. I think it's it's important to have the inserts on the back of the building as well as the front. I think the windows on the back of the building were replaced by a former owner. That's correct, Steve. Those have already been done. You're just replacing the ones on the front. That's correct. Oh, oh thank you. If everyone, if the committee members are willing to go with the change based on the recommendations for installation of that arch piece of trim, if that's acceptable, I can go through the criteria sheet. Um, this is Martha, and I think I can live with that, Steve. Okay. Uh, I can kind of live with it in that it's hard to uh everybody draws a different picture in their head based on words and definitions then i believe lucky in his intent to do mimic that uh curve it feels essential to me to make sure that there is no flat exposed at the top of that curve so i don't know how to like distill those words into something that feels like a very easy thing to comprehend or see is where I'm struggling a little bit. Well, to Steve's point, I believe just the fact that we will do our best to mimic the existing file is about all you, is as simple as I can get, I believe. But just make a template from one of the existing upper sashes. Yeah, exactly. And then transpose that to the inside of the frame of the new windows just outside of the upper sash. And again, as close as possible to the upper sash. Yeah, I'm following. And, I, and again, I can write that in the recommendation form. If that's okay with everyone, I'll go forward with the reading the criteria. Exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. The removal of historic materials or alteration of features and spaces that characterize an historic property shall be avoided as much as possible. Character defining features, finishes, and construction techniques or examples of craftsmanship that characterize an historic building shall be preserved. Deteriorated character defining features shall be repaired rather than replaced when possible. Where the severity of deterioration requires replacement of character defining feature, the new future features shall be replaced in kind. Any treatments that cause damage to historic materials, including but not limited to chemical or, chemical or physical treatments, shall not be approved. With the recommendations, this would be acceptable. Existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use. Any new development shall be differentiated from the old, but shall respect and be compatible with the massing, size, scale, architectural features, detailing an overall character of the primary historic building and nearby historic properties. Acceptable. Alterations to buildings called for by public safety, accessibility, and fire code shall be designed to maintain the character of the construction materials and features to the maximum extent feasible, acceptable. Proportion, compatibility of relationship between width and height of facades, as well as relationship of width to height of windows and doors, acceptable. Rhythm, visual patterns established by the alterations of solid walls at opening, openings, windows and doors, and the facade of a building shall create a rhythm, so that's being maintained. Architectural features, including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, 
fan lights, trim and other forms of molding or character defining detailing prevailing on the existing building shall be considered in the alteration of a building acceptable. Outdoor lighting fixtures. Is there any change in lighting? No, none. Okay, so that's not applicable. Windows and doors on historic structures, character defining windows and door patterns, placement, sizes, proportions, and original features, such as trim, sash, and molding shall be preserved to the extent possible. When preservation is not possible, such character defining windows and doors must be rehabilitated or replaced in kind. Windows and doors that are not character defining may be replaced, but such replacements must be compatible with the historic building style materials and architectural features, acceptable. All in favor of the application with the recommendations as far as using the template from the existing window and installing that in the frame as close as possible to the upper sash. All in favor of that, speak your names. Eric. This is Lynn. Martha. I can say yes. It, with the recommendation. Steve says yes. Yeah. Liz says yes. Uh, I guess I'm going to say no, only because I still don't think the language is uh, clear enough that if an issue arrived that anybody would uh, really be able to parse that out, but I don't know that I can make the language any better and I think it'll pass with my no vote okay so it, it does pass four to one in favor and Meredith you want to explain the next step uh yeah so um lucky i will get the recommendation form from steve because there is a recommendation that's basically going to be a condition on the permit um, i will need your signature on that before we can issue the zoning permit um so i can either email that to you or i can let you know when it's here so that you can sign it which would you prefer yeah if you could shoot it over in an email that'd be fantastic Okay, so you'll you'll be getting probably, you know, at least one, maybe two of those <laughs> once we see where the next application goes. Um, but we'll I'll email those recommendation forms um, and then you'll just have to sign them off and then send a scan of that signed page back to us so that we can move forward with with stuff. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks, Lucky. Um, and just a quick little note for for committee members. Um, when it's a design review, sort of a reminder for these applications that are only going through design review and don't, don't go to DRB, um, your recommendations do become conditions on the permit, but they, you know, I can understand Ben's issues because I don't get to play with the language at all. It's whatever your condition, you know, your recommendation is that becomes the condition um, because I don't have the discretion to, to tweak things. Um, and that's the other thing. If you try and put in a condition about like somebody having to come back to you, hmm. I can't really issue a permit to authorize them to begin work on condition that they come back if something's a problem. So it, it, it becomes a little tricksy. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. We can move to the next application for 8 Langdon Street, Langdon Street Apartments, LLC. Reviewing a new above ground fuel storage tanks with tie down pads and screening fence. Uh, yes, that is me again, Lucky Boardman. And I have Alicia with me to help describe this and hopefully answer any questions. Thank you. Hello. Um, the we were proposing originally to do two underground um, propane tanks. However, in, in this location, the Department of Public Works opposes that. So we were forced to, if to have these, we want to put them above grounds. So we have 
tie down pads, concrete tie down pads. Um, and then because it is in the design review district, we certainly wanted to put in some of the a fencing just to, to screen the, the views. Um, I did my best to create some images that showed what I expected two propane tanks with a little section of fencing from either um, the Riverside, Elm Street, and then also from Hazen Place. Um, it, it was it just proposed to be a kind of what we call typical screening fence um, with made out of wood. Um, and it's not it's not going to cover the entire width of the opening, just the the one end by the tank so that we can still access the tank um, and, and maintain and the, the fuel can be delivered. And then on the Elm Street, the Riverside, we would connect, um, we would do the full length of full width of Hazen Place. So it would be probably two sections of fencing um, to create a, a screening, visual screen. Can you describe where the tanks are going or do we, Meredith, do we have a slide plan? We do. Meredith, would you mind pulling it up? Thank you. Uh, so this is the site plan. Um, so Main Street is here. Um, and this is Hazen Place that goes down to the side. So here's Langdon Street here. And here's Hazen Place, which goes back and, and gets down to this parking area in the back. Um, and so here's where the two, right now there's underground fuel tanks here, but these are gonna be above ground. And here's the longer stretch of fence on the river side. And here's the short stretch of fence so that they can still get accessed. Um, and then I'm gonna scroll up to those images that Alicia was talking about. So here's what it looks like now from across the river. And then there's the fencing that'll go in. So this is that, is this the parking lot uh, next to the building that has like the barber shop in it, Alicia? Maybe. I can look, yes. Um, I think this is, I think this building here is the one with the part, the, the barber shop, I yeah. think. Yep. And then here's the view from uh, like the Onion River parking that side entrance right um and here's what it looks like now and then here's with the mock-up of the tanks inside and the fencing does that help eric yep thanks looks good to me i have a question were you able to get a waiver to get those above ground tanks that close to the building Yes, um, Lucky maybe can speak more. I believe there was discussions with the um, building officials. Is that true, Lucky? Yep, uh, we had everybody come out, the chief of the fire department and uh, Michelle and inspect it previously just to make sure everything was Because I think usually, it, don't they require you to keep those 25 feet away from the building? It, it's 10 feet, so we're yeah. about foot or foot and a half different so the variance oh okay i wasn't sure what the requirement was as far as the dimensions and you're pouring a pad and set the tanks on the pad that's correct i would suggest when you pour the pad that you put some screw anchors into the ground we have two indoor fuel tanks that were about a third full twin 275 Lives. And when we got flooded, we didn't fill the tanks with water, but at a third full, they lifted a five inch pad off of a base. Okay, thank you for that. So we are changing that to anchor them beyond <laughs> the, the tanks were elevated to keep them as high as possible but we're now going to have to go into the concrete floor of the building to anchor them so they don't float. That pad was over 2,000 pounds and it floated. Uh, so I would, I would suggest a screw anchor into the ground when you pour the pad to give you additional grip in case you, you don't want those things to start to float and then move around with water moving through if that ever happens again. Yeah, I would assume Alicia's uh, formula 
compensated the weight and buoyancy of that <clears throat> per whatever state or national specs required. Yes, we did do a bit buoyancy calculations for both the thousand gallon and then the 500 gallon propane tank um, with a factor of safety of 1.3. So um, it should, it you know, buoyancy, the, the water being in the area should not lift it up um, because the even if the tank was completely empty, the, the concrete weight is is in theory holding down that tank in place. Good. <laughs> <laughs> just just speaking from experience. <laughs> Absolutely. Every flying UC propane tanks floating down the river from somewhere. So we definitely want to prevent that. Any members have any other questions? Nope. No. Nope. No. Okay. Then I'll read through the criteria that applies. Existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use. Any new development shall be differentiated from the old, but shall respect and be compatible with the massing size, scale, architectural features, detailing, and overall character of the primary historic building and nearby historic properties. That's acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, mechanical equipment, trash storage, and fencing shall be cited to minimize adverse visual impact or adequately and appropriately screened from public view. That's acceptable. And lastly, landscaping, screening, and site furnishings. Projects within the district shall be subject to landscaping requirements and shall consider the following. And again, landscaping could include fencing. Uh, fencing for mechanical, mechanical equipment screening. Walls and fences shall be compatible with the site and the building and scale traditional materials and design that reflects the period of the building and or is compatible with the surrounding context. Acceptable. All in favor of the application, speak your names. Eric. This is Martha, I say yes. Yes, yes. Yes. And yes, vote is five in favor. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you all for your time. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you very much for coming and good luck with your projects. Thank you. We can move to the next application for 125 Berry Street, another way. This is for a new exhaust vent and window replacements. Someone there to describe the project? Sure. Yeah, this is Joel Page. Um, hi, Liz. Haven't seen you in a long time. Um, <clears throat> yes, uh, 125 Berry Street. You're all probably familiar with the important service that they provide in town. Um, they work a lot with transient folks, give them an opportunity to have a place to stay during the day and to touch base and to get services and an opportunity to uh, look at other opportunities. Um, the current building. Uh, that they've been using has been worked on over the years and we're uh, in the current new renovation trying to provide some updated interior ADA uh, replacement of a bathroom and some other interior finishes. Um, on the outside of the building, we're looking to replace 22 of the 38 windows, uh, which are in poor working condition and also extend, they have a, they have a, a kitchen that they use to provide food for the folks who come during the day um, and it needs to to meet code have a range hood that extends it outside so looking to extend a hood outside of the building itself um, the building sits back really from the bulk of the you know, from berry street by quite a bit and also sort of from the railroad tracks and um stone cutters way by a bit so it sort of hangs out in the back background that most people don't really pay attention to most people actually probably recognize the building from the greenhouse that you see when you're like if you're driving to the co-op and the windows 
throughout most of the building, except for two or three, are double hung windows, uh, traditional, the ones that haven't been already replaced um, are uh, wood framed, wood sash windows. We're looking to replace the, the, the windows with a vinyl insert. Um, variety of reasons for going with the vinyl insert, primarily cost, also durability. Uh, the windows, you know, the building isn't as well maintained as we might like to have it always maintained. And so this will help improve the reduction or help reduce the amount of yearly uptake and maintenance that happens. Um, and that's kind of primarily the big picture. Most of the windows that are on the building right now have storm windows on them. So that obscures the existing sort of look of the buildings as we're used to. Um, and we're hoping that the new uh, double hung replacements will be a little bit clearer and show a nice look to the building. Are they, they just double hung one over ones? Yes, they are. Yeah. And where is it that you propose that this kitchen vent will be? It's um, on the back side. So if you're looking at this uh, screen right now, yes, uh, you can see it on the right side of the building. Uh, in the background, there um, is a wind right right up there. Yeah, exactly. And then we have some other views that show you know how you might see this uh, back side. This is from a back parking lot. Um, there is a couple of views from the railroad tracks as well. Mm -hmm. um, so the, there's natural vegetation, well, sort of vegetation, <laughs> trees that have grown up there over time that are in vacant areas and that help screen the building uh, from its most visible location. And um, the way the building sits with the other buildings sort of close to it, that elevations, side elevation is relatively hard to see. Okay, thank you. Were any of any other windows explored other than the paradigm vinyl windows? Um, no, uh, well, I think the I didn't do the exploration Connor contracting is helping us on the project. Um, I think they may have looked at some wood replacement inserts, but the price was quite a bit more and we have a really limited budget. So we're trying to stretch it as far as we can. Okay. Are these true vinyl or are they fiberglass? They're vinyl. Yeah, fiberglass would probably be up closer to a wood window or cost. And what is the exterior color? Um, of the windows, white. Yes. And the current windows are white. The building itself is clad in old aluminum uh siding that looks like lap siding okay how many windows are you talking about uh 22 So that's all sides of the of the house then, correct? Correct, yeah. Except for the, um, there's an extension on the building that was built, I don't know when, um, that is where the greenhouse is, that we're not touching any of the windows on that. Okay. I think those are existing, I think they might be vinyl windows in that night, but I don't know that for a fact. So. I think that extension is fairly recent. Mm -hmm. in the last 15, 10, 15 years, maybe. Not yeah, sure. Yeah, you, you might be right. I think last Skangus did it, Skangus Architects. Oh, uh, 
uh, the building is set back from the street quite a bit, isn't it? Um, yes, it is. And it's been altered a bit too, I think, from its original appearance. <laughs> Hard to tell. <laughs> I don't know, but I mean, there's some integrity there, but seems like not a whole lot, in my opinion. So at this building in this location, everybody's okay with the vinyl windows? Well, I was going to say, as a matter of precedent, we did ask Lucky, who was just on this call last time, saying we weren't okay with vinyl windows. And he came back with another variety of window. But I, I realized consider... the location is different, and yeah. uh, I get all that. <laughs> but are we... If we are within a design review controlled district, are we then as members of the committee able to choose uh, which part of the district we care more about than others? Good question. You know, I mean, maybe you can make that subjective, but I think there's also a lot of architectural evidence um, that State Street is the buildings there have maintained very much uh, original character. Whereas I think this building on Berry Street um, does not have the architectural significance that, for example, Lucky's two buildings do. And I went through the same thought process and thought, that's, I think that's part of our job is to make that differentiation. Uh, I would certainly like to hear the difference in price between fiberglass windows and these. Uh, I don't know whether it's significant or not. These are pretty simple windows. I mean, another thought would be to put fiberglass windows on the, the part that faces the, what is it, the east elevation that faces Barry Street or something that's, you know, maybe more... Um, appropriate than, than a vinyl window. Mm -hmm. Let's, uh, we should look at the photo of that space. I think it's the north elevation. Um, yes. Yeah. That's it right there. So that has a mix of fixed units, the two larger ones, a door, which is a non-historic door, two non-historic doors, um, and then those double hung units. And I and only two of the double hung units are being replaced in that elevation. Why? Uh, the other ones have enough integrity that we think thought we could keep them. Are they wood, Joel? Uh, I don't remember. I would have to go back and look. See what uh -huh. Okay. Which which two are being replaced on the porch or up no, under no. the eaves? The one, uh, yeah, the two with the letters on them, the ones that have the letters in the view. So it's kind of like it's winking at you. <laughs> I'm sorry, the two on the right side of that porch on the second uh, floor? So on the in the gable end, the left one as you're facing the building. On the second floor, the right one, next to the tight, closest to the door, and on the first floor, the the large, uh, non double hung window. But that upper right window stays the same. Correct. But the upper left one's being changed. Correct. And so, so how do you, they match? When you, when you look at the window, so because it's an insert, all of the exterior trim will remain. Um, the interior stops get pulled off, the sashes get pulled out, the um, sash weight pockets uh, that remain get would get insulated, and then the insert goes into the, the existing rectangle that's left. Um, uh, the stops go back in. And the window, you know, when it's put in, it's cocked and sealed. So it will, a double hung window will look this, it'll have the same feet, same dimensions as the existing window. So 
the idea would be that when you look at it, you should not be able to see the difference. Even though if you look closely at this photo, there are two different size windows there already. We noticed <laughs> yes. that. On the top. We did notice that. So some of the, uh, and, and to be honest with you, I don't remember what is original there and what was added at some point in the past, more recent past. You know, there's so much new, new, new material on this building, on including those dormers on the roof that don't appear historic, in my opinion. But I'm not, yes. you know, it's hard to tell from the photograph. I'd have to go up and look at them more closely in person. But you know, there's just so much that's it's hardly contributing to the historic district anymore. I, I think. Yes, it's again the. Fact that it's set back where it is makes a makes a big difference. I guess it's up to us to decide whether to make a decision based on its location and its current condition as to whether as to whether to let you know approve the vinyl windows or e even on the front side is everyone okay with that all right might, might as well if you're going to do vinyl windows everywhere else might as well put them on the front side is one of the real issues with vinyl durability because you're not going to get the life out of the vinyl windows that you would out of fiberglass yes so it's, it's maybe a short-term savings, but a long-term cost. As far as vinyl goes, the paradigms are a a step up, They're good. but not not quite to the level of the like a Marvin fiberglass, like the Integrity series, or the and now it's called the Elevate series. One one thing I would like. Uh, uh, as a member of the uh, committee is to, you know, if there if there's alternates to bring the real prices uh, to the meeting as, as so that we can tell what the difference is. I will try yes. to remember to make sure we get that. That would be very helpful to compare, to compare the cost of a vinyl even a good quality vinyl to a fiberglass. And again, the fiberglass, the, you know, like the Marvin fiberglass windows are so close to the end. Again, that's a wood frame window with a clad exterior that's fiberglass, which really mimics the historic profiles of wood sash windows and wears very well. Again, for future. Uh, just so a reminder, because there's been so much discussion about the windows, to make sure that everybody understands about the range hood going in into an old window location. I'm certainly good with that. It's good to put it in an old window location, though. Yes, I am too. Yeah, I'm. I'm okay with that too. Yes, I'm. Yeah. I'm fine with that. I don't also, I, I mean, I agree with all the arguments about the building not being contributing and it kind of already being a hodgepodge and it already being sort of like put together and in, in not a contributing structure. I am sensitive to the fact that we have asked other individuals to delay their process and come back to us because of the vinyl window thing. And now we're saying um, that doesn't need to happen on this project. So I guess to echo Eric's point, if there is a way to ask our applicants to say, will you bring us prices for this? If you're thinking vinyl, will you also have uh, a next step up in a fiberglass window as, as something that they can get out ahead of this question? Um, I don't know if that's 
a fair thing to ask them before they come, but I'm tempted to ask to delay this, to have him come back with that price comparison, but that just feels overly bureaucratic. So those are my thoughts. Look at this from the humorous side. We're just continuing the traditional treatment of the building with the vinyl windows. <laughs> All right, fair enough. <laughs> That's a rough building. I was involved in part of a project on it, and uh, it provides some huge good services to the uh, homeless community or unhoused community, I guess it's appropriate now. Yeah, I agree, Eric. I think it serves a wonderful, um, it has a wonderful service to the community, and it's an important structure for sure. Ben, I really appreciate your view, but I really think it's part of the charge of the committee to make some judgments in that kind of regard, consider other factors. Uh, I mean, this is a lot different than Lucky's buildings and maybe Agreed. some of the buildings that uh, uh, have, uh, have been better preserved in the past. I agree. Yes. And, I, and I appreciate that feedback. And I think it is good just to have as part of the record that there's some thoughtful discussion around it. Yes, no, well taken. As far as this project goes, I can go through the criteria. If everyone, it looks like everyone is willing to live with the vinyl at this location. Exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. The removal of historic materials or alteration of features and spaces that characterize an historic property shall be avoided. Character defining features, finishes and construction techniques or examples of craftsmanship that characterize an historic building shall be preserved when possible. Deteriorated character defining features shall be repaired rather than replaced. Where the severity of deterioration requires replacement of a character defining feature, the new feature shall be replaced in kind. Any treatments that cause damage to historic materials, including but not limited to chemical or physical treatments such as sandblasting, shall not be approved. Uh, these windows and the remainder of the changes at this location are acceptable. Existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use. Any new development shall be differentiated from the old, but shall respect and be compatible with the massing, size, scale, architectural features, detailing, and overall character of the primary historic building and nearby historic properties. Location and appearance of all utilities, mechanical equipment, trash, storage, and fencing shall be cited to minimize adverse visual impacts or adequately and appropriately screened from public view. The range hood is acceptable. Alterations to buildings called for by public safety, accessibility, and fire codes shall be designed to maintain the character of the construction materials and features to the maximum extent feasible, acceptable. Proportion, compatibility of relationship between width and height of facades, as well as relationship of width to height of windows and doors, acceptable. Rhythm, the visual patterns established by the alterations of solid walls and openings, windows and doors and the facade of a building shall create a rhythm. These are maintained in their existing locations. Architectural features, including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, entablature, trim, and other forms of molding or character defining detailing prevailing on the existing building shall be considered in the alteration of the building. Acceptable.
And lastly, windows and doors on historic structures. Eric, you're defining windows and door patterns, placement, sizes, proportions, and original features such as trim, sash, and molding shall be preserved to the extent possible. When preservation is not possible, such character defining windows and doors must be rehabilitated or replaced in kind. Windows and doors that are not character defining must be re may be replaced, but such replacements must be compatible with the historic building style, materials, and architectural features. Acceptable. All in favor of the project? Speak your names. Eric. Martha. Liz. Ben. Steve. And Ben. So five in favor. Meredith, do you want to explain the next step? Uh, once I get the recommendation form on this one, Joel, because there weren't any actual changes recommendations um mm -hmm. we'll just get the permit out as soon as possible because everything you're doing is all interior no changes of mm -hmm. use so we don't need to do an administrative site plan so um we'll get that out as soon as possible do you want it mailed or do you want us to email and have somebody come pick it up um whatever's easiest for you can work either way so i can <laughs> you'll you'll get it sooner if you come pick it up probably because the right. mail is still I, a little I don't iffy think we're in that much of a rush okay so. then we'll mail it yeah. <clears throat> Appreciate it, everybody. Thank you. Good deliberation. Thank you. Thank you, Joel. Meredith, is someone here for College Street? Nope. Nope. That's going to have to get tabled to the next meeting. Okay. Then we can move on to the last application for 15 East State Street. Is someone here from East State Street? I'm here, Tim Heaney. Hi, Tim. Hey, Steve. Go ahead and describe your application. I'm getting your building open. That's great. No, oh, thanks. Tim. All your buildings. Well, that's really no. I've got a, gone back to ground zero on a few others that we didn't pay as much attention to trying to get the stores open. So. Sure. Got a, I'm definitely referring to the ones across Main Street, all on that yeah. line. Yeah. That all showed up open was impressive. Okay. Thanks. A lot of people, as you know, <laughs> including you, who dug in. Thanks. Uh, uh, so, Tim, can you just, sorry, I'm going to move it along because I've got 15 yeah. minutes before my next meeting starts. So, Tim, if you could describe what is going on at 15 East State Street. Okay. So, all it is is probably classic story you're hearing over and over. We're needing to move utilities up out of the basement. Um, we had an oil hot water boiler um, and two 275 gallon oil tanks, the elevator controls and our electrical service are all in the basement of this building. So um, to uh, comply with the rules, we're taking an upstairs space um, that's close as we can get to the elevator shaft. So we'll be able to build a separate space within it for elevator mechanicals and controls new boiler room, um, we're going to do a propane boiler, and all new you know, controls and pumps. So um, the electrical will go outside on the south end of the building towards City Hall. And I think this permits primarily the door on the uphill side of the building toward Miles Court. Um, we're basically wanting to remove a window. It's a casement window and install a three foot metal door um, it's kind of the utility side of the building on an alleyway and um, so the intent would be just put the door in paint it to match the, the building and uh, would need I think three steps into the alleyway for access um, and then the propane the new tanks too right yeah I haven't done as much work on the tanks um, the initial intent was just to put them down at the end of the alley toward parking lot um it we just it's, it's just basically the hot water heating system because we have district heat this is going to be just for the swing seasons so it's a pretty expensive way to cover the swing seasons when just heat's not on but that's what we got to do so um but that being said i don't think we need a huge fuel capacity um so that's why we were thinking like two 200 gallon uh, propane tanks uh, 
on the end toward the city parking lot and um, obviously we put them on concrete pads and tie them down. So that's here, Tim, is where yeah. those tanks yeah. are gonna go? Mm -hmm. I, I think I'm probably gonna have to come back on that one for you. I apologize for not having the details. Um, because the other location we can go is around the corner. There's a large enclosure for an air conditioning unit um, that may be a better space that we can set it off the building better. Does that make sense? The other area is around the corner from where we're looking. Yes, and I did not take pictures of that end of the building. It's just so, it. so it would be around he, back in here, right, Tim? Yes, exactly. Yeah. And kind of right where your little hand is waving on that is yep. that's the enclosure that bumps out where there's a pretty large air conditioning unit there. Um, and there's a little, there's some extra space around that, not a lot, but there's, I think we have enough to be able to pull the tanks far enough away from the building. Um, and protect them. Tim, those are already screened, aren't they, back there? The air conditioner is, yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to see if I can pull up a, a different a Google Maps view so you guys can see that in case you want to give a sort of a conditional or an approval of if it goes in there so that Tim doesn't necessarily have to come back if it's going in that space where it's already screened. Um, I mean, I think Tim, before we, before Audra was able to issue the permit for that, we'd need the details on the tie downs. Right. Um, but, uh, here we go. So there's screening here. That's off to the side because there's the dumpster and behind the dumpster is the air conditioning unit. Is that right, Tim? Right. Yeah, this is from uh, about a year ago, so. It's accurate. So there is a better view. And will the tank fit into that space? Yeah, I mean, we may have, I, there's a chance we're going to have to modify it, Steve. Um, and certainly our, our work handle how we handle our trash differently or there's a couple of options with how we do this okay but it'll be in that general area anyway and it'll be screened by the fencing right so either okay. here or right around the corner in between these two structures here right yes I, i'm willing to approve both of those yes he needs okay. choice <laughs> Looks fine to me too. Okay, sounds good. I'm okay too. But with the door as well. Yes. So I'll read through the criteria quickly. Exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent, compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. Additions and alterations uh, to non-historic and non-contributing structures shall respect to be compatible with existing patterns and setbacks found in adjacent buildings. New additions on non-historic and non-contributing structures that overshadow or dis diminish the historic character of adjacent contributing structures are prohibited. These changes are acceptable at this location. Existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, mechanical equipment, trash storage, and fencing shall be cited to minimize adverse visual impact or adequately and appropriately screened from public view acceptable. Alterations to buildings called for by public safety, accessibility, and fire code shall be designed to maintain the character of the construction materials and features to the maximum extent possible, acceptable. Okay. For 
portion, compatibility of relationship between width and height of facades, as well as relationship of width to height of windows and doors, acceptable. Rhythm, visual patterns established by the alterations of solid walls and openings, windows and doors, and the facade of a building shall create a rhythm, acceptable here. Architectural features, including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, trim, and other forms of molding or character defining detailing prevailing on the existing building shall be considered in the alteration of a building acceptable. And lastly, regarding landscaping, screening, and site furnishings, mechanical equipment screening here is acceptable. All in favor of the application, speak your names. Eric. Martha. Liz. Ben. And Steve. Five in favor. Uh, Steve, are you going to put on there the option for locations for the... I don't think the application had two different options for location of the tanks. I think the application said to the east, so maybe just put in a little option that it can go behind the building in the existing near the existing area for the AC units. If that requires minor alteration of the fencing, let's go with that too. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I just want to make sure he has those options depending on which is preferable yes. both for flood and for building. Yes. No, either, right. either location is acceptable. That's fine. Thank you. That just that lets me get the zoning permit out the door. So at least he's got the one permit that <laughs> yes. we can keep moving down the down the line. <laughs> I think you've worked out the details on the window and door with Michelle, right, Tim? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that way with the okay. zoning and stuff, we can get moving. Yeah. Good. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Good luck with this one and all your other projects. <laughs> Thank you. You too. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Everyone had a chance to look at the minutes, 9-5 and 9-18. Um, I never got a copy of the 9-5. It wasn't in your packet? No. Uh, I've closed my electronic packet. Um, uh, you weren't at that meeting. I was at 9-5. No. Oh, right, 9-18, you weren't. You got it. I'm looking at the wrong one. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, my other meeting supposed to start in seven minutes, so if we wanted to just table both of these to the next meeting. That's okay. doable too. So um, and I actually, I, I didn't have a chance to look at the 918 myself and I have some edits to that version. So um, where I noticed some typos, so I can get a cleaned up version of that for the next meeting. Okay, we'll table okay. that one for the next meeting. Any other business? No. Otherwise, do I hear a motion to adjourn? So move. I'll make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> yeah. Well, since we so have two, that it. counts as a second. All in favor of adjournment, speak your names. Eric. Martha. Ben. Steve. So meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for coming.